Hello, people of New World. Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Lamani. I hope you're doing well. Now, today, we're going to be talking Blunderbuss one-shot builds. Now, before I get started, yes, I did cover two versions of this build with the same weapons, but now I'm going to tell you how to actually do it, how to do it right, and optimize it so that you have the most one-shot kill potential and have a ton of fun. These are simple to play, easy to set up, and so rewarding to just chain over and over and over again. We're gonna be talking about the Warhammer and we're gonna be talking about the Ice Gauntlet and how you can do this. These are both going to heavily rely on some form of CC. So like with the Hammer, we have Shockwave and Wrecking Ball. We have Leeching Path to catch up. With the Ice Gauntlet, we'll be using Ice Shower and locking down a target for more Rend and making them very, very vulnerable. This just opens up huge windows of opportunity because of all the Rends from both sides, both weapons, and being able to completely blow somebody up with a quick shot, a shrapnel blast, or even grenades. Both of these builds are going to use the same standard blunderbuss setup. You'll be using net shot, Azoth shrapnel blast, and splitting grenade. All of these abilities will give you some kind of CC, debuff, or burst damage potential. You can use them in a bunch of different ways, either to lock down a target or to finesse a one-shot combo. The great thing with the blunderbuss is it has so much passive defensiveness and internal cooldown reduction that allows you to continue doing this over and over and over again, and sometimes not even need the second weapon in order to completely burst a target, especially when you start getting some mortal empowerment stacks. Onto the secondary weapon builds, I'm gonna warn you, these are not focused on doing damage. They are your support, utility, CC, lockdown options. So the Ice Gauntlet's gonna be set up like a normal IGVG frontline player. You're going to be using Ice Storm, Ice Shower, and Entomb. Focus on CC and cooldown management. It also has Entomb for the back pocket survival or the full cleanse. Goal of how you play this is you are simply going to try and find a target, lock them down in an Ice Shower, or find a target who's been hit with Ice Storm and has unending thaw applied and hit them with the heavy root. You then go in, you drop your nades on them, shoot trap, they're pretty much dead. Or you just pretty much shoot trap and there's no nades needed. Now onto the Warhammer setup. We'll be using Wrecking Ball, Shockwave, and Path of Destiny. The thing again with this is we will never be light or heavy attacking with this weapon. It's simply used for its abilities. There's gonna be two separate combos you're able to use, but it's mainly for its CC lockdown. And then that Crowd Crusher side mixed with stuff with like Leeching Path is going to give you a lot of extra healing so that you can survive a little bit longer. You have two combos you can do. You can either come in, hit them with Wrecking Ball and then Shockwave. And then when they're there, you can attempt to drop nades on them and then Shot and Shrap or you can just shot trap and try and get a quick burst on and kill them if they're a low health target or maybe they're in light. Alternatively, we can do the reverse. You can go with shockwave and then hit them with wrecking ball. And then while they're on the ground, they can't do anything, freedom won't apply. And then you shoot them, shrap shot, and they're pretty much dead. You can drop nades if you need to as well. It may be easier to set up a wrecking ball into a shockwave, but the one shot version is better if you can shockwave first, which might be a little bit hard. So you have to make sure they're exhausted and then bleeding into wrecking ball. Now, the important thing to mention with both of these builds is specifically using your splitting grenade. This is a fantastic burst tool when you maybe don't have a Azoth Shrapnel Blast up. You can use this, detonate it, and then combo it with a single normal aimed quick shot on your blunderbuss paired with any CC option or even free shot if they don't have any stam so that you can burst them quickly. Splitting Grenade is also fantastic for AOE clumps. You just drop this on grav wells when people are stacked up. It's a lot of extra damage that you'll do if you wanna just pad some meters or use it for that anti-healing. Only other ability to mention is net shot, and you should be using exhaustive net with this setup. It's gonna allow you to catch targets off guard to initiate a fight so that they generally start rolling around and then they exhaust themselves and they're slowed and you can just go and catch them and do whatever combo you need to do. Additionally, this is going to be your mobility in your entire kit. Make sure you start to move backwards or you're standing still so that you move back and get blown back and you can get out of grav wells, ice showers, or just clear some distance pretty quickly. Now, why are both of these in the exact same video? Well, it's because our attribute distribution and our gearing is pretty much identical. The most optimal for damage output is going to be around 250 strength, 150 int for the elemental damage, and 100 con. If you'd like to be more tanky, you can play 150 con and drop down to 200 strength. You'll have less damage burst, but with mortal empowerment and everything else, you'll still have plenty. The thing is with 200 strength, we still get that passive that allows our CC to maximize damage. And that's super important in a build like this. When it comes to gearing, you'll be in light armor for the most optimal damage output, but you could play in medium as a sort of point CC bruiser if you do choose to go to the 150 con or even 200 con and drop down to 150 strength. Anyway, for perks and gear, your weapons and their perks are the most important thing to note here. Your gear will stay relatively the same. So as far as the blunderbuss goes, enchanted, flame attunement, plagued splitting grenades, on a warhammer, sundering shockwave, thwarting counter, and then attunement, preferably flame or chain fire. You could also go for Keenly Jagged, but I think that's arguably a dead perk. On your Ice Gauntlet, 
Honestly, just use Crystalline Curse. Otherwise, look for something with Deadly Frost, Refreshing Move, and Chain Fire. Now we have important ability perks. So when it comes to the Blunderbuss, we need Plagued Splitting Grenades, and that should always be on your Blunderbuss. And then we need Leeching Shrapnel Blast for a little bit of self-sustain and Exhaustive Net Shot. On your Hammer, Sundering Shockwave on the Hammer, and then Leeching Path of Destiny if you can fit it in for more self-sustain. For your Ice Gauntlet, you can choose if you want Undening Thaw or Deadly Frost on the Gauntlet. Otherwise, get one of those two perks on your gear, whatever you choose. The rest of it, the gear, it's just going to be Rezil, Refreshing, Shirking Fort for whatever other pieces that you need to fill. I'll be honest with you, you can find a lot of success with either of these in a two perk setup. You just go Ability Perk, Rezil, get all those, and then Shirking Fort, Rezil, or Refreshing Rezil. You're going to notice it. It's going to be strong regardless, and you'll have that burst potential. Amulet, Health, Stamina Recovery, Slash Protection, Ring, we're looking for Mortal Empowerment, fire damage, hardy, or you have options like being able to pivot into keen awareness instead of fire damage. And then on your earring, we're looking for the typical refreshing toast, purifying toast, and refreshing. The heart rune you should pick is detonate. Brutal heart rune of detonate. You do take more damage, but you can dive into a quick pack blow up as long as you time it right, or you can even use it to just combo while you're in the middle of a Warhammer setup. You can run into packs of people and pick up some quick kills. When it comes to gemming, we'll be putting a Rune Glass of Ignited Opal in both of our weapons. Unless you're playing with a Warhammer, then you're going to use a Rune Glass of Ignited Ruby so that you get some of that in scaling. For our gear, I like going in a 20, 10, 7.5 split. So that's 20 slash 10 physical, 7.5 elemental. The most efficient, clear way to do this is put five Rune Glass of Ignited Onyx in your gear for that fire fire damage, and then run three cut pristine opals. Alrighty gamers, so that's how you're going to one shot people with your blunderbuss. I hope this helps. I hope you have fun. And I hope that maybe now you understand if this has been happening to you, how you can go do it to other people. Again, it's super cheap to set up. You don't even need the rune glass. To be honest with you, rune glass is just going to maximize damage, but you can pick this up for just a few thousand gold and start having fun. As always, if you need anything, let me know. Hit the links down below. Drop me a DM in Discord. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you to every single one of you beautiful people for being you. Peace.